know, a question I get a lot of times is what happened to Italian boxers? There was a, an era in boxing where the Italian American especially was a, a big part of the, the high level boxing scene. And in, in, in the years since, we, we've been uh, few, fewer and further between uh, the, the, the Italian immigrant boxers, so to speak. And, you know, I, I basically bring it down to the fact that like all cultures, boxing is a is a culture driven sport, and that's probably your last option. Fighting for a living, combat for a living, is typically a very difficult way to make a living. And if you have other options, if you break yourself into the middle class, you'll probably find yourself in less of a position to be that desperate to have to fight for a living. It's also, you know, it's a romantic feel to be able to literally fight your way through to a better life. Um, you know, the movie Cinderella Man comes to it comes to mind with James Braddock, you know, c coming from nothing uh, in, in, the, in the Depression era and, and fighting his way to a, to a better life. But, you know, ultimately, uh, Italian culture, uh, the immigrant culture that was around uh, and, and more that was more so in poverty in the late uh, uh, 19th century and early 20th century into the mid 20th century, really eventually got to that middle class and it started creating, it stopped creating fighters, boxers. Uh, you've got some of the best boxers in history were Italian-American, but of late, you know, you've had less and less. You know, you had, uh, I know you had Ray Boom Boom Mancini in the 80s. You had uh, uh, myself, uh, yeah, first you had Arturo Gatti, then you had myself. Uh, now I think the the, the most, uh, I, I, the biggest talented, uh, uh, the most talented Italian-American boxer I see is Sonny Conto from Philadelphia. He's a, a solid, solid prospect. Uh, had a terrific amateur career. I believe he was signed with top rank. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if he still is. Uh, I know he's still, I think he's still undefeated. Uh, moving his way up the ladder, but uh, certainly you get less and less of those kind of fighters where the Italian-American culture creates, where they've, they've literally been boxing so long they, that they started in the amateurs. They got a long amateur career and they have, they're able to uh, manifest it into a professional boxing career if you're you know typically that takes a lot of dedication and for the most part Italian American culture has created other options you know you think about you know for for just to go to the cliche route you know the pizza business itself I mean it was a, a you know the restaurant business pizza business itself you know we we kind of uh, made it our own and a lot of Italian American a lot of the Italian American culture went into this um, I, I can tell you from my grandfather's point of view uh, when I came to this country you know uh, the construction business a lot of Italians are are special in their hands you know the granite business construction business they uh you know they they sort of went into that route and went into that those businesses as well as they were very skilled craftsmen and workers uh, when it came to the construction work so uh as things went along and and, and the italian american community uh, sort of delved into other things moved on into other things you started seeing less of us um become fighters and boxers uh we, we are a, a big part of boxing history i believe you know some of my favorite fighters obviously i'm i'm, I'm gonna be slanted towards them being being Italian American, uh, but I think Willie Pep in general is one of the best fighters ever. I mean, I think he was, uh, regardless of nationality, I think his his, his brain uh, and, and his intelligence in the ring, especially for that era where boxers were mostly like in your face bangers. You know, you got when you get guys like Willie Pep. Obviously, Sugar Ray Robinson is another amazing one. But when you get guys like Willie Pep and you know thinking outside the box um, in the, in that era where it was just mainly a, a, a tough sport where guys were aggressive and trying to win. You know. I, I, when I see good boxers in that era, I, I'm really, I'm really, I think they were ahead of their time, you know, because eventually that laid a building block and, and a blueprint for future boxers to, you know, use a skill style as well. Not to say that the bangers weren't skilled; they were skilled in their own way. They had a method to their madness as well. But it, it was, it's interesting when you can see a smooth, slick boxer in that era, in the black and white uh, film era. You know, when you got uh, guys like Jersey Joe Walcott, uh, um, Sugar Ray Robinson. You know, typically, a lot of those slicksters were were black. But when you watch a guy like Willie Pep, who comes from a culture where they're all tough guys, you know, Carmen Basilio, Jake LaMotta, Rocky Graziano, skilled in their own right, but they're tough, they're tough, come forward guys. You see Willie Pep kind of breaking the mold. It, it, for me, it's really, really interesting. So for me, Pep was uh, an, an amazing story and an amazing uh, fighter. And, and from what I gather from uh, the quotes and uh, uh, things he said, uh, quite, quite the personality as well as some of the video that exists on him and his interviews and talks, you know. So it's cool. Obviously, my favorite boxing movie and my second second favorite movie of all time behind Braveheart is uh, Raging Bull. You know, it's a great story for me personally. Uh, I think it's the it, it takes place in an era that was the uh, where boxing was super popular. 
super, super popular, one of the biggest sports in America, unlike it is today. And it was also a great time for Italian American community where there was a lot of us and we had a lot of our own communities and we were a tight knit community. So if you were an Italian American world boxing champion at that time, you had the best of both worlds. You were a, a star in one of the most popular sports in America. And also you were a star in a community that was thriving, that was starting to kind of come out of the lower classes and looking to, uh, to, to build heroes out of, the, out of themselves. So for me, uh, Jake LaMotta's story uh, and, and the movie Rage and Bull I, I, is, is an awesome movie. I've watched it a million times in my life and I, I never get tired of it. But, uh, you know, you also have uh, somebody up there likes me. Uh, it's the Rocky Graziano story, not a bad movie as well. Uh, I would have loved to see a, a Willie Pep movie. I think they've, they've, they've worked on something with Willie Pep. I think it was in production or it might have filmed, finished filming. I don't know. I'll be on the lookout if, if the movie does come out, uh, uh, the Willie Pep story, because I'm sure if it's well made, I mean, it, it, I'm sure it's quite a story as well. Well. But yeah, so that's uh, that's the reason why uh, a lot of the Italian American community is, is not in boxing anymore. They've kind of we kind of faded away into other uh, businesses and, and lifestyles because you know the Italian American community went from the lower classes to the middle class, and it's you, you a middle class culture will create less people that fight for a living because fighting for a living is typically your last option. But if I'm gonna say who to look out for today in terms of the Italian American community, uh, the person that stands out to me right now is Sonny the Bronco. Conto. He's a heavyweight out of Philadelphia and he's Italian American and hopefully he's the, the next uh, world champion in, uh, in the Italian American community. Sono Poli Malignaggi, dammi un like, uh, e fammi un commento, fammi, ditemi quello che pensate su questo soggetto e sul, uh, sul pugilato italo-americano di, di questa generazione ed anche della generazione, delle generazioni del passato. Ci vediamo.